This lecture was conceived by the uh, conference consortium as a living memorial to two pioneers in the drug field taken from us uh, tragically young. So Alison Chesney and Ellie Kiloran were radical and passionate supporters of the rights of drug users and worked to develop services that were sensitive to the needs of particularly marginalized groups. And they both worked in and managed the Roma project in West London, which unfortunately no longer exists, which was a unique residential facility for active drug users, putting harm reduction into practice in a very significant way. This lecture, which is supported by their respective families, friends and former colleagues, is a fitting tribute and also a reminder of their contributions to the drugs field in the UK and beyond. The way I wanted to conduct inspections was not as an inquisition, but as a free consultancy and I needed experts to tell me what needed to be done. And then came one of those very, very fortunate things, not just for me, but for the prison service, because onto the scene I was introduced to Eddie Caloran. And from the moment I met him, I knew we had exactly the person we needed. Eddie had someone who had himself used drugs. He'd been through the scene. Eddie had been an absolutely fearless worker in the field. Eddie was absolutely meticulous in what he did. And in all this, he was very fortunate in being backed up by Alison. I knew perfectly well that between them, they represented something very special. And what was more, Eddie, having come in from outside, was able to bond with my inspectors because he at once saw the importance of helping. And I can best give evidence of that, of Eddie coming in to see me one day and he said, there's one prison where they're doing things absolutely right. And why don't we do a good practice inspection to then publicize what they're doing as being good and then hopefully others will follow. Well, that was typical of Eddie. He wasn't negative at all. He was positive. Harm reduction is a rather uh, simple idea. Uh, people like using psychoactive substances, they like using coffee, tea, nicotine, alcohol, cannabis and a wide range of other drugs. People use drugs to be convivial, to have fun, for pleasure, for self-understanding, for mystical experiences, for working and playing <coughs> harder and for self-medicating and for coping. Using drugs can be harmful, uh, though it's usually not, and if people like using drugs, the public policy question really is quite a simple one. What can be, can be done to help them avoid harm to themselves or to others? So central to that idea is an acknowledgement that the human brain appreciates the effects of psychoactive drugs. Therefore, societies somehow have to learn to live with drugs, it doesn't mean an acceptance of the collateral damage and harm reduction is there. It aims to reduce risks, to mitigate the impact on the individual and the wider society. Harm reduction, as I've always argued, is, is good public health and it's good social policy. And it really should be the underlying uh, principle of all drugs policy, but it's not. Harm reduction projects were guided by the new public health and the model of public health that was embodied in the World Health Organization's Ottawa Charter for Health Promotion. This made it clear that health promotion requires healthy public policy, the crea creation of supportive environments, strengthening of community actions, developing personal skills and reorienting health services. In fact, the way harm reduction developed, I think public health could now learn a lot from harm reduction because a lot of those good ideas in public health have sort of gone a little bit by the wayside in many countries. As applied to reducing drug-related harms, the new public health included, amongst other things, engaging populations and communities and creating the condi conditions for change. Overall, what was evident was a new ethos, one where drug workers and drug users 
were working together to tackle health problems. Drug user organisations were and continue to be an important part of those developments. Let me turn now to the science. Two and a half decades of research on drugs harm reduction has led to sophisticated methods to assess risks and epidemics, to encourage evidence-informed policy. There's also a large evidence base on the effectiveness of harm reduction interventions, well summarized by the World Health Organization and the US Institute of Medicine. Harm reduction is feasible in a wide range of national contexts. Opioid substitution therapy is effective are finding replicated in many countries. Providing needles and syringes helps people change their behavior. Multi-component approaches are needed and the higher the dose of harm reduction, as is shown in Amsterdam, the more protective it is. Harm reduction is a good return on investment. The Australian return on investment studies and the World Bank studies in Asia show that it's an investment even in low prevalence settings. A consequence of the legal regulation of tobacco and nicotine is that the least harmful products are the, har are the hardest to obtain. Snus is a Swedish ground tobacco available loose as a, in a small pouch. It's my only visual aid today. This is snus. Now many of you people who smoke tobacco here would ne never have come across this. Uh, it, if, if you use snus, uh, switch into this, um, the health gains are nearly as large as quitting tobacco altogether. Swedish men have much lower lung cancer. They have the lowest lung cancer mortality in Europe and it's because most of them use this little pouch of tobacco. I, I won't use it because it, it tastes horrible. If you haven't used it, it's horrible. But if you, <laughs> in fact, if you use it and you've never used it before, you get quite a buzz from it. Um, <laughs> um, but the sale of this in Australia, New Zealand, Iceland and throughout the EU, except for Sweden, is illegal. I wanted to get some tonight and I asked a, a colleague in the UK to post me some and it was illegal to post it so it had to be brought by hand tonight. Now if you smoke and you switch to this, uh, you're going to have a longer life than if you continue to smoke cigarettes. So the legal environment can create risk for us. Harm reduction is now portrayed as part of a Britain broken by labour, burdened by debt, and over-dependent on the state. David Cameron at the Conservative Party conference to quote, there are 150,000 people in Britain today who get their heroin substitutes on the state. Their addictions maintained by the taxpayer. That's shameless. But by this elision, a recovering Britain <coughs> requires recovering addicts. Anne Milton, Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for Public Health explained to the uh, Drug Scope Conference two weeks ago that the government's new strategy will, to quote, be built on a single word, recovery, end of quote. And she explained that the creation of a public health service will help people to get off drugs and deal with the wider issues behind their addiction. Now, I'm all for a, a public health service, but the minister really needs to be told that you can't base a drug strategy on recovery alone. Options for recovery are, of course, necessary and essential for those who want it and are able to achieve it with or without medication. But to base a whole drug strategy on recovery is clearly a nonsense. You know, just for a moment, exchange alcohol for drugs in that statement she made. You know, the, the alcohol strategy will be based on recovery. It clearly only hits a little bit of what we need to be tackling. Finally, for too long, public health has focused on the powerless, trying to get drug users, drinkers and smokers to change their risky behaviour. We tend to ignore the broader risk environment in which people live their lives. Moreover, 
There are so many studies of the knowledge, attitudes and behaviours of drug users and so few studies of the knowledge, attitudes and behaviours of policy makers. And it's the behaviours of the latter that are much more important. They are the real problem. So at the end of the day, our target as researchers, as public health experts, as drug treatment providers and as advocates, our target should really be the real risk, ta risk takers, the decision makers who put politics above evidence and are prepared to take risks with other people's lives. <clears throat> with other people's lives. Thank you.